Coffee Break German, Season 2, Episode 23. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück bei Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Und wir hoffen, es geht euch allen gut. We do indeed hope that everything is going well for you and that you are enjoying this season of Coffee Break German. Now, we're slightly changing the topic here because this episode is going to focus on looking at extended family and possessive pronouns. Because it's something we've not really covered in any great way. We've seen them many times and I'm sure it, the minute we start talking about this, you'll recognize these words. But that's what we're going to look at today in greater detail. Also, bist du bereit? Ich bin bereit. Uh, seid ihr bereit? Ich hoffe es. <laughs> Let's get started. Los geht's. Also, Andrea, ich habe eine Frage für dich. Ja, bitte. Uh, was hast du am Wochenende gemacht? Ah, das ist gut, dass du fragst. Meine Mutter hat mich besucht. Ach, schön. Sie wohnt in der Schweiz, aber sie war vier Tage in Schottland. Wohnt äh, deine Familie in, in der Schweiz? Ja, meine ganze Familie wohnt in der Schweiz. Meine Eltern, mein Bruder, meine Schwägerin und auch meine Onkel, Tanten und Cousinen. So wie alle Nichten und Neffen. Right, there's a lot of vocabulary in there. Vocabulary that perhaps we haven't covered yet. I asked Andrea, was hast du am Wochenende gemacht? What did you do at the weekend? And Andrea's answer was? Meine Mutter hat mich besucht. Now we saw besuchen as a, a verb uh, a couple of lessons ago. Besuchen to visit. And she said, Andrea said, meine Mutter hat mich besucht. So besuchen is going to take a straightforward accusative there because you're saying she visited me, not visited to me or anything genau. like that. Uh, meine Mutter hat mich besucht. Um, then you went on to say? Sie wohnt in der Schweiz, aber sie war vier Tage in Schottland. So she lives in Switzerland, but literally she was four days in Scotland. She came to Scotland for four days. Now, my question then was, does your family live in Switzerland? Wohnt deine Familie in, in der Schweiz? Let's have a listen again to Andrea's answer. Ja, meine ganze Familie wohnt in der Schweiz. Meine Eltern, mein Bruder und meine Schwägerin und auch meine Onkel, Tanten und Cousinen sowie alle Nichten und Neffen. Okay, we know Eltern, parents, meine Eltern, my parents, mein Bruder, my brother. And then you used another word. Ja, meine Schwägerin. Das ist die Frau von meinem Bruder. Die Frau von meinem Bruder, so you're brother's wife. Genau. Your sister-in-law then. Ja, genau. Schwägerin. What would the brother-in-law? Mein Schwager. Schwager. Okay, so the Schwager is the masculine form and the Schwägerin the feminine form. Genau. Got a change of vowel and the in ending as well. Yes, we have Schwager with a normal A mm -hmm. and Schwägerin with an Umlaut. Okay. And then you added some other other people in, the other members yes. of your family? Uh, Onkel, Tanten und Cousinen. So your uncle, your aunt and the cousins. Aber Vorsicht, Cousinen sind nur die Mädchen. Okay, so they're female cousins. Yeah. So what would male cousins be? Cousin. Cousin. Ja. Um, so it's ein Cousin. Ja. Eine Cousinen. Eine Cousine. Cousine. Okay. Ja. Achtung, manche Leute, some people pronounce it Cousin. Oh, right. Okay. Ja. Like a little bit French. Yes. Okay. So a male cousin is ein Cousin oder ja. Cousin. Ja. Um, a female is Cousine. Ja. The male plural would be? Cousins oder Cousins. Okay, and the female plural? Cousinen. Cousinen. Right. And you also mentioned, I think, nieces and nephews. Ja, Nichten und Neffen. So those are the, the plural forms. Genau. And the singular forms for a nephew? Der Neffe. Der Neffe. And for an, a niece? Die Nichte. Die Nichte. Okay, let's run through family members because I think there are a few family members that we are familiar with, but probably a few that we aren't. So we've already got father and mother. Mm -hmm. Vater, Mutter. Brother, sister. 
Bruder und Schwester. Okay. What about grandparents? Das sind die Großeltern. No, we can talk about uh, der Opa and die Oma. Ja. So is that like a, a sort of diminutive form? Ja. Also wir, wir haben die Großeltern, which is the grandparents. Mm -hmm. And uh, they consist of die Großmutter. Ja. Yeah. Oder der Großvater. Ja. Yeah. Oder die Oma und der Opa yeah. oder Omi und Opi. Okay, so uh, different forms. And there are many more. Right. In the answer to my question, you also mentioned some other people. So what other uh, family members should we know about? Uh, possibly the grandchildren. Okay. Yeah. That would be der Enkel, die Enkelin. So the grandson, der yeah. Enkel. Yeah. And die Enkelin for the granddaughter. Genau. Right. I'd never heard of those words before, so that's good. Genau. And together we can speak of uh, die Enkel. Die Enkel. Yeah, then you would just speak of the grandchildren. Right. Or you could also say die Großkinder, but it's a bit old-fashioned. Right. So Enkel is better than Großkinder. Yeah. Right. Then we have a very important person, die Schwiegermutter. So is that linked to the Schwägerin and the Schwager? Genau. So would that be your um, mother-in-law? Yes, exactly. A very important person indeed. Mm -hmm. Schwiegermutter. Would it be Schwiegervater? Genau, sehr gut, super. Uh, so the the father-in-law, Schwiegervater. And then presumably we can swap it around and talk about a, a daughter-in-law and a son-in-law. Genau. Das ist die Schwiegertochter. Die Schwiegertochter. Und der Schwiegersohn. Der Schwiegersohn. Okay. Now, those are the in-laws. What about, like, if you've got a stepmother or a stepfather? Ja, die Stiefmutter. Okay. Would a stepfather be Stiefvater? Genau. And can we say uh, Stiefsohn and Stieftochter? Ja, natürlich. Okay. So, a few new members of the family that we've learned there. Mark, ich habe eine Frage. Ja? Hast du viele Onkel und Tanten? Also, uh, ich habe drei Onkel und uh, vier Tanten. Ah, wow, das sind doch sieben Personen. Ja, das, ja? Ja, das ist viel. Und wie heißen deine Onkel? Also, meine Onkel heißen Hemisch, John und Fergus. Ah, super. Und wo wohnt dein Onkel Hemisch? Mein Onkel Hemisch wohnt in äh, die Vereinigten Staaten. Ah, in den USA. Ah, in den USA, ja. Super. Und äh, wie heißen deine Tanten? Meine Tanten heißen Margaret, Jean, Elizabeth und Carol. Sehr gut. Und wo wohnt deine Tante Margaret? Also meine Tante Margaret wohnt in Edinburgh. Ah, super, sehr schön. Ja. Sehr gut. So, we've seen already a couple of possessive pronouns in these sentences. Can you tell me uh, what they are? Would that be the meine Tanten and deine, uh, deine Onkel? Ja, genau. Okay. So, meine und deine, they're quite easy to figure out yeah. what they mean, yeah? So, meine Tanten are? My aunts. Mm -hmm. Und deine Tanten? Your aunts. Genau, sehr gut. What would we say if it was his aunts? Uh, seine Tanten. Genau, sehr gut. So, we see a little bit of a, of a pattern here. Mm -hmm. But maybe we want to start with the masculine singular of these pronouns. Right, so let's take uncle. Ja? Yeah. That would be then? Mein Onkel. Mein Onkel. Okay. So, mein Onkel. Dein Onkel. That's your, so your, on, your uncle, dein Onkel. And his uncle, sein Onkel. Sein Onkel. Her Onkel. Ihr Onkel. This is where I always get mixed up. I always get mixed up with the sein and ihr. Um, but ihr... Kind of sounds like her, so it's okay. Ja. Und dann haben wir noch 
its uncle, which is maybe a bit odd for English speakers, but yeah. for us it makes sense. Mm -hmm. because it could be the child, for example. Das Kind, yeah. So its uncle, sein Onkel. Genau, sehr gut, super. And let's move into the, the plural forms. So yeah. our uncle would be? Unser Onkel. Unser Onkel. And your plural? Euer Onkel. Euer Onkel. And their uncle, ihr Onkel. So that's like the her uncle, your uncle. Yeah, it's, it sounds it's the exactly the yeah. same and looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Careful though, when it's the formal your. Yep. It's also ihr Onkel, but it's obviously with a capital, capital letter. I. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it's mein, dein, sein, ihr, sein, then unser, euer and ihr. Yes, and now the good news. Yeah. So that was for uncle, but mm -hmm. if it were kind. Which is neuter. Yeah, it would be exactly the same. Okay, that is that is good news. Um, so mein kind, my child, uh, dein kind and so on. Yeah, genau, sehr gut, super. Okay. So now let's look at the fe a female noun. Let's go to so tante. Tante, yeah. Meine Tante. Yep, meine Tante. Deine Tante. Yep. Seine Tante. Okay, can I guess, would it be ihre Tante? Genau, sehr gut. So her aunt, ihre Tante. Uh, it's aunt. Seine Tante. Mm -hmm. Unsere Tante. Our aunt, feminine form. And now a tricky one. Eure Tante. Eure. Now spelling that it would be... E U R E. In comparison to the the, the masculine one, which is Oya E U E R. Right, Oya and Oira. Yes. Okay, Oira Tante, and then for the Z form, the the their and Ira Tante. Ira Tante. So the 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 feminine ones are pretty much the same as the masculine ones, with the exception of adding an E. Yes. And then there's that change with the. Eure and euer. Exactly. Euer being the masculine form and eure being the feminine form. Yes. And now I have more good news. Okay. Because if we're talking about plural, mm -hmm. so tanten, yep. it's exactly like the feminine version. Fantastic. Yes. Meine, deine, seine, ihre, seine, unsere, eure and ihre. Exactly. Ausgezeichnet. Okay, we're going to take a short break now, but we'll be back very soon because I believe we're going to take that a little further with some examples. Yes. Here at Coffee Break German, we want to help you turn your downtime into do time. Brauchst du mehr Übung? Join us on Facebook three times a week and put your German to work with our language challenges and cultural insights. As they say, practice makes perfect. Oder auf Deutsch, Übung macht den Meister. Head over to facebook.com slash coffeebreakgerman. Wir sehen uns hoffentlich bald. You're listening to Coffee Break German and we are talking about family members today and of course that means that we need to also talk about possessive pronouns for saying my aunt, your aunt and all that kind of thing. Andrea, can you give us some examples please? Yes, of course. Mein Bruder und ich haben drei Tanten und zwei Onkel. Unsere Tanten wohnen in Zürich, aber unsere Onkel wohnen auf dem Land. Unsere Cousinen und Cousins sind alle erwachsen und leben mit ihren Ehepartnern und Kindern. Unsere Großeltern leben leider nicht mehr. Right. I think I've understood most of that, but there are a couple of, of words that I want to ask you about. Can you start again at the beginning and we'll see if we can translate this as you go along. Mein Bruder und ich haben drei Tanten und zwei Onkel. So my brother and I have three aunts and two uncles. Unsere Tanten wohnen in Zürich. Our aunts live in Zürich. Aber unsere Onkel wohnen auf dem Land. Does that mean, but our uncles live in the country? Ja, genau. Okay. Unsere Cousinen und Cousins sind alle erwachsen. So our cousins, our female cousins and our male cousins are all adults? 
und leben mit ihren Ehepartnern und Kindern. No, this is the bit that I wasn't sure about. They live with their partners? Yeah. Ehe is, is marriage, so okay. marital partners. All right. Okay. So with their, with their partners, Spouses. with their spouses and children. Genau. Unsere Großeltern leben leider nicht mehr. And there you mean our grandparents, unfortunately, are no longer alive. Genau. Sehr gut. They live, unfortunately, no longer. Literally. Genau. Unsere Großeltern leben leider nicht mehr. Okay, can we go back one sentence and go back to where you were talking about your cousins? You said, unsere Cousinen und Cousins sind alle erwachsen. And then, can, can you read this next part again? Und leben mit ihren Ehepartnern und Kindern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you had said that the plural form would be ihre. Yes. But you see, mit requires a dative. A dative. Okay. So you can see that if we have a dative or an accusative, these pronouns change accordingly. Right. And these are pronouns, not adjectives, just so that I'm getting this right in Yeah, my head. they can be found under the name uh, possessive pronouns or possessive articles because, strictly speaking, they replace the article. Right. In terms of how they decline with all the different parts and everything like that, do they work similarly to the definite article, for example? Yes, I think similarly is a good word. Yeah. Similarly is a good <laughs> word. <laughs> How accurate or <laughs> inaccurate. Let's find out a little more about this now. Um, we can, can we start with something perhaps a little easier? Let's yeah. not worry about the data just now. Let's no, look let's at start the with accusative. The, let's start with the accusative. And we obviously know Uh, from previous exercises and lessons, what changes uh, der, die, das, or die? It's only the der yes. ones that change. So it's the masculine singular that changes. Yep. So we're looking at, for example, mein Onkel would become meinen Onkel. So ich sehe meinen Onkel. Genau. I see my uncle. But I would still say, ich sehe meine Tante, ich sehe mein Kind. Ich sehe meine Eltern. Okay, so it's only the, the, the masculine form that changes and does it change the same way for all of them? Almost. Let's go okay. through them. Huh? So, so, my uncle. So, ich sehe meinen Onkel. Ich sehe deinen Onkel. Okay. Ich sehe seinen Onkel. Mm -hmm. Ich sehe ihren Onkel. Yep. Ich sehe seinen Onkel. Uh -huh. Ich sehe unseren Onkel. And now the tricky bit, ich sehe euren Onkel. So that's as opposed to euer. Yeah. So nicht euren, sondern euren. Euren. Okay. Yeah. And uh, at the end, ich sehe ihren Onkel. Okay, so it's pretty much perfect apart from euer. Yes. Euer in the, the nominative form, but euren in the accusative form. Genau. Right. So far, so good. Well, let's have an example. Karl sieht seine Eltern immer, wenn er nach München fährt. Manchmal rufen er und seine Frau seinen Bruder an und sie planen ihren Besuch in Zürich. Okay. You said uh, Karl sees his parents all the time when he goes to Munich. Ja. Yeah. Okay, so Karl always sees his parents when he goes to Munich. Karl mm -hmm. sieht seine Eltern immer. And there he's seeing them, so they are the object. And therefore, mm -hmm. seine is accusative here, even though it's the same. Genau. Karl sieht seine Eltern immer, wenn er nach München fährt. Then the next part was? Manchmal rufen er und seine Frau seinen Bruder an und sie planen ihren Besuch in Zürich. Right. Okay. So there you're talking about anrufen. Yeah. To call someone. And that takes a direct object. Yeah. So it's the accusative that we're looking at. Genau. You said, manchmal rufen er und seine Frau. Yeah. So sometimes he and his wife call seinen Bruder genau. an. So seinen there is the accusative form. This is the object of who they're calling. Genau. 
So sometimes they, um, sometimes he and his wife call his brother and they plan their yeah. visit to Zurich. Yeah, ja, genau. So, und sie planen ihren Besuch in Zürich. Genau. Ihren Besuch is also accusative there. Mm -hmm. um, what gender is Besuch? Der Besuch. Der Besuch. Of course it must be because that was the only one that changed. Exactly. Okay, so ihren Besuch. Um, so they're planning their visit to Zürich because they're planning the visit and the visit is the accusative, it's the, the, the object. Right, that makes sense. Sie planen ihren Besuch in Zürich. Okay, sehr gut. Shall we have a look at the dative now? I guess that's fairly inevitable. Yes, unfortunately it's not as easy as the accusative, but it's also not terribly difficult. I okay. think we see a lot that we've seen before in the dative. And the patterns of, of yeah. this. Okay. So if we look at der Onkel mm -hmm. again, and we know in the dative it would be... Dem Onkel. Yes, very good. So we have this M ending. And this we see also in the possessive pronouns. So instead of mein Onkel, it would be mit meinem Onkel. Okay, so mit, one of our prepositions that takes the dative, with, with my uncle, mit meinem Onkel. Genau. Can I try the, the yes, others? Yes, please. So mit deinem Onkel, genau. with your uncle, mit seinem Onkel, ja. mit ihrem Onkel, with her uncle. Ja. And then mit seinem again for its uncle. Ja. Would it be mit unserem Onkel? Ja, genau. I'm going to take a guess here and ask, would it be mit eurem Onkel? Ja, well done. You see again this change here mit von euer zu eurem. I guess it would be very difficult to say mit eurem Onkel. Yeah, it doesn't sound so good. Yeah. Does it? Eurem. Ja. Mit eurem Onkel. And then the, the Z form mit ihrem Onkel. Again. Sehr gut, super. Okay. So, if we look at the Tante now, it's die Tante. And what would die Tante be in the dative? Mit der Tante. Yeah. Okay. So, we have an R ending. Yep. And we will see this also in the dative. So, meine Tante mit meiner Tante. That makes sense. Mit meiner Tante, mit deiner Tante, mit seiner Tante, mit ihrer Tante, mit seiner Tante, dann mit unserer Tante, mit eurer Tante und mit ihrer Tante. Well done, sehr gut. Makes sense. I keep saying that makes sense, but it does. It does, <laughs> it, really it does. does It's sense. very logical, isn't it? So we look at das Kind. Ja. Ja. And what would be das Kind in the dative? Uh, mit dem Kind. So where have we seen dem before? It's the same as the masculine ones. Yes, and it's really exactly the same. Okay, so we, we don't really need to go through all of this. No, Let's we don't have to do work quickly, hard anyway. at all here. Uh, mit meinem Kind, mit deinem Kind, mit seinem Kind, mit ihrem Kind, mit seinem Kind, mit unserem Kind, mit eurem Kind, mit ihrem Kind. Fantastic. Okay. Do the plurals work in the same way? Because I'm thinking about how the plural works with the definite article. Yes, so if we have die Tanten, what would it be? Mit den Tanten. Sehr gut, super. So with my aunts, what would it be? Mit meinen Tanten. Super, sehr gut gemacht. Okay, so meinen, deinen, seinen, ihren, seinen, unseren, euren, ihren. Ja, yeah. I think when we start talking about this, well, I don't know about our listeners, but I get worried because I think, oh no, it's going to be complicated and it's going to be uh, random endings of words, but it does all make sense. Yes, it's not random at all. We see the same endings throughout uh, our uh, articles and, and adjectives and all these things. Okay. Could we hear some examples of this perhaps? Uh, yeah, natürlich. Wenn wir nach Wien fahren, wohnen wir immer bei meiner Tante und ihrem Hund Bello. Es gefällt meinem Mann im Haus von meiner Tante. In unserem Zimmer stehen immer frische Blumen 
und wir haben eine gute Aussicht von unserem Balkon. Okay, I think I've understood most of this. Let's go back through it, sentence by sentence. Wenn wir nach Wien fahren, When we go to Vienna, wohnen wir immer bei meiner Tante und ihrem Hund Bello. Right. We always stay, or we always live, I suppose, um, in my aunt's house, or my aunt and uh, her dog Bello. Genau. Okay. Ja. So, by there is taking the dative. Ja. By meiner Tante. And then, does the ihrem also depend on that by? Genau. Okay, so by meiner Tante und ihrem Hund Bello. Okay? Es gefällt meinem Mann im Haus von meiner Tante. That's a little bit tricky. Um, it pleases my husband. And es gefällt is one of those verbal phrases that needs the dative. Ja. Es gefällt mir. Genau. Okay, so in this case we need to say it pleases my husband. Es gefällt meinem dative man. So it pleases my husband to be in the house. Genau. Of my aunt. Another ja. dative. Ja. Okay. Genau. In unserem Zimmer stehen immer frische Blumen. Und wir haben eine gute Aussicht von unserem Balkon. Okay, so in a room, literally stand always fresh flowers. Ja. There are always fresh flowers in our room, in unserem Zimmer. That's another dative there. Ja. In our room. Und wir haben eine gute Aussicht, and we have a good view, von unserem Balkon. Genau. From our balcony. So for and again, using the, the dative. Genau, super. I think we just have time for a, maybe two translations into German because we've been doing some listening in German. So going from English into German, let's have two translations, please. Okay. So my first sentence is maybe a bit odd in English, but it's because I want you to use the dative. Okay. I'm curious now. <laughs> The dog of the Müller family has lost its toy and is now playing with their shoes. Right. I'm trying to work out where the datives are here. The dog of the Müller family has lost its toy and is now playing with their shoes. So the shoes of the Müller family. Yes. Right, I'm going to have a go. Um, der Hund von dem Familie Müller. Das ist die Familie. Von der Familie Müller. Ja. Hat ähm, Spielzeug. Ja, das Spielzeug. Das hat seinem Spielzeug verlass, verloren. Okay, ähm, verloren mit Akkusativ. Ah, okay. Hat, ist, ist das so ist, hat sein Spielzeug verloren und jetzt spielt mit ihren Schuhe. Ja, wer spielt mit ihren Schuhen? Der Hund. Ja, er. er. You have to put in the air. Ja. Okay. So, der Hund von der Familie Müller hat sein Spielzeug verloren und jetzt spielt er mit ihren, ihrem, ihren, ihren Schuhe. Ben. Schön. Ja. Genau. Okay. Also, der Hund von der Familie Müller hat sein Spielzeug verloren und jetzt spielt er mit ihren Schuhen. Okay. That was tricky, but let's, let's move on. Okay. Rüdiger's stepmother is very nice. She has given him her car, 
now he can drive to his girlfriend's place. Okay. I think we're just going to work through this freeze by freeze because it's, yes. it's very tricky. So the first phrase was Rudiger's stepmother is very nice. Um, die Stiefmutter von Rüdiger ist sehr nett. Yeah. The next sentence was? She has given him her car. Right. She has given him her car. So she has given him him there will be dative. Mm -hmm. Her car is going to be the object, so it's accusative. Yeah. Right. Um, she has given him Z hat to him im. Her car is das Auto, so ihr Auto. Yeah. Given, gegeben. Yeah, sehr gut. Sie hat ihm ihr Auto gegeben. Super. And then your last part. Now he can drive to his girlfriend's place. Careful, we don't need to say her place. We would just say to his girlfriend. Okay. Yeah? So now he can drive to his girlfriend's place. Um, jetzt uh, can't. Can. Can er zu ihrer Freundin fahren? Okay, Rüdiger is a man. Ja. Yeah. Ah, okay. Jetzt kann er zu seiner Freundin fahren. Sehr gut, super. The whole thing, please. Rüdigers Stiefmutter ist sehr nett. Sie hat ihm ihr Auto gegeben. Jetzt kann er zu seiner Freundin fahren. Okay. I can't imagine a time. <laughs> Hopefully this will come, but I can't imagine a time when I'll be able to come out with that very quickly in German. But I suppose it's all about practice. It's all about practice. And don't forget, uh, German is a language where all the difficult stuff happens at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully this hasn't been too difficult for all our listeners, um, but we're going to leave it there for now. This has been a long lesson and with some very tricky stuff in it. But I suppose the patterns are very important. As long as we focus on those patterns, then we'll be doing not too badly. Now, there's more practice of those patterns, of course, in this week's bonus episode. And that is available along with the lesson notes and the video version at coffeebreakgermanplus.com. You can find out all you need to know there about our premium version of Coffee Break German. And don't forget, you can find us on facebook.com slash coffeebreakgerman. And we're also on Twitter at LearnGerman. That's it for this episode. Next time, we're going to be picking up just one aspect of what we've covered here, but also looking at something completely different. So you can look forward to that in the next lesson of Coffee Break German. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis bald. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2017, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2017, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved.